Welcome everyone back to another episode of Quick Stop Photoshop. Today is going to be the first video in a three-part series, a little sub-series of Dodge and Burning. I often get asked, how do I get the light that I do in my photographs? 80% of my editing, I would say, comes down to Dodge and Burning. It adds so much dynamic range to your photographs and it just makes your photo pop off the paper. I mean, you can take a flat photograph and turn it into something super amazing using just Dodge and Burning. Before we jump right into it, I wanna give a brief kind of background on Dodge and Burning. Where did it come from? Why is it called dodging? Why is it called burning? So back when photographs were developed in dark rooms, you would dodge and burn the developing photograph. Dodging is when you're dodging light or you're reducing the amount of light exposed on the photograph while it's developing. So we'd use like a little uh, popsicle shaped thing on a stick to block or cast shadows on the photograph. That area of the photograph would then become brighter as it develops. And then burning is when you're exposing extra light to a spot on a photograph. In that area of the photograph, as it was developing, the photograph would get darker. So that's burning. So dodging and burning. Dodging is lightning, burning is darkening. All right guys, let's jump right into it. So once again, we've got another photograph from, drum roll, Iceland, you guessed it. I seem to be pretty addicted to Iceland, but it's hard to uh, argue why not. It's hard to, it's not hard to see why. In the first video of this Dodge and Burning subseries, we're gonna cover the technique using Photoshop's native Dodge and Burn tool. The other two videos, I'll cover two other techniques that I really like to use and probably use more often than this one, but a lot of people use this one a lot. I kind of bounce back and forth between using this one most of the time and using some of the other techniques, but let's jump right into it here. You'll see here, Photoshop's Dodge and Burn tool can be found on the left panel here. The dodge tool is shaped like a popsicle stick. As we were talking earlier, it casts shadows over the developing photograph. That's where that symbol comes from. And then the burn tool is a little hand with a hole in it. So you're kind of letting through extra light as the photograph develops. So that's how you can remember what's burning and what's dodging. Also, it says burn and dodge tool. We'll also see on the top bar here, we have additional menu options, very important. We have our range, so we can target a specific range, midtone, shadows, and highlights. This comes in handy quite a bit while you're using this tool. I usually do midtones and then I'll target highlights later on. And then we have our exposure. You can think of this as like an opacity, a brush opacity. So what's the flow of your brush? How strong do you want it to come through at each stroke? And then we have this very important protect tones. So what protect tones does while you're dodging or burning over an area, it protects your shadows and your highlights. So it prevents them from clipping. And it also stops your colors from changing hue or becoming less saturated. Often when we lighten an area in a photograph, the saturation drops. And then when you darken an area in the photograph, the saturation increases. That's just a rule of thumb. Checking protect tones will help balance or neutralize those effects that we don't want while we're lightening and darkening our photo darkening our photographs. Let's take this shot for example. I made an extra layer called dodge and burn so we can see some before and after. You'll see when I look at a photograph, I'm going to say, where is the light coming from? to myself? That's a question I ask. It's a good question to ask. When we're dodging and burning, we want to stay true to the direction of light or else it starts to look funky. So in this photograph, the light is coming from the right side here. So the dodging is gonna happen along this wall, which we have some natural sunlight already and dodging really helps bring that out. Often in a lot of my photographs, I don't have any direct light like I do in this one and dodging can really help bring light into a photograph where the photograph would otherwise be quite flat. In this case, we do have a lot of light, but dodging will still help us kind of emphasize or exaggerate this light. On the opposite side of the light, like on the shaded part of hills and rocks, we can darken those areas to really bring some contrast and some punch to our photographs. So let's start dodging. Dodging is usually what I do first. You'll see we have some light over here. I've set my exposure to 30. This is usually what I do so I can kind of work things in. I'm also using a Wacom tablet with a pressure sensitive pen. So depending on how hard I push, it also changes the opacity of my pen. Uh, I highly recommend getting a Wacom tablet. We'll talk about this in another video though. So we have some sunlight over here. I'm going to change my brush size a little bit and just start painting in some of this light. It really doesn't matter too much if you're kind of sloppy over the shadows because we do have it 
ranging the range targeting the midtones, not the highlights, not the shadows. So we're kind of brightening the areas that need a little bit of brightening. And luckily that mask that Photoshop has built in up here, this range mask does a really good job. So we're gonna just start painting in here. And I kind of follow the contours of the landscape while I'm doing this. And you can get as carried away as you want. So when I'm doing this, I often zoom in a bit and that helps me see what I'm doing and kind of target more accurately some of the areas of the landscape. So I'm just gonna kind of paint in and for the sake of the video, I'm not gonna go crazy with this. Sometimes I spend like an hour dodging and burning, believe me, and I really get into the details. But just for the sake of this video, I'm going to kind of do this in a crude and quick way. So we've also got some light on the other side here. Quick tip, O is the hotkey for dodging and burning on your keyboard. So also we're gonna paint over here. We have our light coming through from the right side, like we said. You can see it's kind of on the ridge line here, so I'm gonna target that area as well. Let's zoom in a little bit more. And I'm constantly changing the size of my brush to kind of match whatever ridge line width I'm trying to dodge. And then maybe a bit up here. See, there's not a lot of sunlight up on this uh, top right corner here, but look at that with dodging we can make it look like there is now. And see, now it matches where the natural sunlight was and you can hardly tell a difference. Down here, we got a little bit wider of a ridge, so let's paint it in with a wider brush diameter. And then I'm gonna just kinda do like a final, kinda brief crude sweep over on everything here. And then maybe target some of these areas that I didn't hit as hard earlier. We've got some down here. Like I said, you can go as crazy as you want with this. I could make this video an hour long of you just watching me dodge like Bob Ross on my image, but we're not gonna do that because I feel like that might get a bit boring for you guys. So I'm just gonna give you the, the gist of it. In some of my full start to finish tutorials, I do get a little bit more in depth and those can be found on my website. Plug here. All right, and then we've got some light out here in the background. All right, so we've done our dodging now. Now let's switch over to burning. So we're gonna switch our tool here to the burn. Now we're darkening. I'm gonna keep it on mid-tones. I'm gonna reduce the exposure to 30% right here. So now we're gonna dodge some shadows in so we can really bring out that burning that we just did. We don't want everything to be light or we kind of defeat the purpose of in, uh, increasing our dynamic range. So now you can see here, these are the shaded part of our hills on the opposite side of the sunlight and down here and then in some of these crevices here, and especially down in the valley. So I'm gonna just start painting in, and you can see it's darkening where I'm painting in. And I'm gonna paint in on the back side of these hills to kind of bring in some shade here, maybe on the back side of this little guy right there. But it's a very relaxing technique to use, I think. I really get into it. So you can kind of paint in the dark corners and darken these areas where you don't want the eye to go. Yeah, another important thing I forgot to mention earlier is dodge and burning is very effective for guiding the viewer's eye through your image. That's another reason why we highlight and darken areas. Highlight areas we want the viewer to look at and darken areas that aren't as important and we want the eye to kind of uh, skip over. They're important for balancing out the, the highlights and giving more presence to the highlights, but we don't want the eye to linger on those darker areas. All right, so I'm gonna paint in some here, maybe a little bit more on my hill right there, a little bit down here in the dark end of the valley. You can paint in a little bit on the shadows that the clouds are casting just to give a little bit more of that spotlighting effect on the landscape darken some of that background. And I think for now, this is pretty good. So I've done a quick dodge and burning. Now let's see a before and after. Here's a before and then check out this after. And that took us like five minutes. We brought in so much range, dynamic range and kind of life to our photograph just through dodging and burning very quickly. The next step that I would do is it does feel a little empty over here is I would do some light bleeding. And that will also be in another quick stop Photoshop video. And that's where we introduce some of that atmospheric glow that you see from the sunlight when it's right off frame. You can do a bit of that in the dodge and burn. So if I switch back over to the burn tool and then I target my midtones again, make my brush ultra large, and I can kind of just do some sweeping motions like this in from the frame. And you can see that does add a nice bit of light bleed, not so much the hazy atmosphere that I like to go for in my light bleed, but it does add a bit of a source of light in a sense. 
All right, that'll do it for this episode of Quick Stop Photoshop. I hope you guys found this useful. Dodge and burning is one of my favorite techniques. It's about 80% of my editing workflow, so it's very important to try and master, which I'm still trying to do. Stay tuned for video two of this sub-series, and until then, have a good week.